I was a bit afraid when Javier told me that he, they would use the big auditorium here because I feared that with exams coming up and so on, there would be like 10 people in the front row or something like that. <laughs> so it's great to see that so many people are interested. Uh, another thing is that I was very surprised to find that uh, I agreed with some of the other speakers. <laughs> I don't usually do that. Um, let me see if something comes up here. This one? How do I do? This one? Okay, this one, okay. Um, I see the problem that we have discussed today as a problem with two legs. If you're going to climb the mountain, especially if you have a stomach like I have, you need two legs. Uh, last week I was discussing with some of my colleagues in Morogoro University about development of Tanzania and so forth. And they were very concerned about some of the same things that some of the speakers here have talked about. Uh, the problems with uh, uh, corruption and many other things, uh, politics and so forth. But I think it is their problem. You will never become an African, unless you are one, of course. Let African countries deal with their own problems, and then we need to look at what we are doing to them. The focus from my side would be, in this talk, would be, what are we doing to them? Do we want Africa so, to succeed? And I think some of the speakers have been touching into this. There are three sides of it. The development aid side, uh, investors are coming in, particularly from China. There are a few Norwegians also coming in. Um, and what they are doing, and then uh, no fund type of thing, development uh, investments. Um, so, uh, let me see, I have this thing here. There are many problems in all these three. Actually, uh, when it comes to uh, the combinations, like the no fund kind of thing, they have all of these problems. But when it comes to development, I need to look at this. Then, uh, one of the problems is that you have an idea, and where is the idea normally created? It will be created here. And then we implement it there. Let me give you an example. All this wonderful food is excellent. It's a very good idea, it's good to look at, but we are talking, for God's sake. We can't eat it. <laughs> so this is just to make you hungry, right? Uh, and many times when we think of excellent ideas here in the north and we want to implement it in the south, it doesn't work because the situation is not what we thought it would be. Um, also, when we want to get advice from there, leaders from here, we go there and talk to leaders from there and uh, they will agree because they belong to the same class of people, you can say. But the people who are benefiting do not necessarily have a say in, in, in that discussion. That's, all, that's also a major problem. Another problem is the way money is raised. You need to convince uh, the Norwegian government or private people donating money to whatever you want to do, that this is, uh, this is exciting and, and, and uh, will change the world and so forth. And it might not be what is the most needed that you, you, you can raise money for. There was a recent uh, evaluation of the Peace Corps. You know, they sent young people to Africa. They don't have particular skills to do some kind of labor somewhere. And uh, in that evaluation, it stated that this is development not for developing countries, but for the people going there from Europe, which is, of course, very true. Uh, now, it's a good thing to develop people from here, but it's not development of Africa. Um, I think uh, another problem with development aid is that too little of the money actually goes to developing anything. Uh, rough calculations that I have seen <coughs> estimate that less than 5% of the overall money actually reached the ground somewhere where it's intended to go. So I agree very much with several of the former speakers who, who doubt the effects of, of foreign aid. 
Now, uh, we had a talk about investment, and investment is something which is very popular uh, politically, particularly in, in, in Africa. The problem is that the attitude that many of our business people have when they go to Africa is that this is a corrupt place, this is a difficult place to work in, so we need to pay our way out of it and bribe people. You don't have to bribe people. I have not built an industry in Africa, of course, but I have never bribed anyone and I've never been asked for a bribe. But if you, in your attitude, believe that you have to bribe someone, then you start coming come with money and, and, and pay for things. Like the Norwegian oil company that managed to bribe the minister of Tanzania to get only 10% tax. Um, another, so our companies do pay bribes, but we tend to be very narrow-minded in what bribes is. We think of bribes as money that you hand over to someone. It doesn't have to be that. You have legal bribes. You can, for instance, make a Start Oil Tanzania LTD company, and you can hand out stocks and the company to ministers and so forth. That is not a bribe. It's a gift. <laughs> <laughs> you can also invite them to come to Norway to give a talk here and pay them 10,000 kuna per day in compensation. It's legal. So, we also tend not to want uh, too much uh, change in things. Norfund for a long time had their main quarter, headquarter for East Africa in Mauritius to avoid to pay tax in Tanzania and Kenya and Uganda. I mean, a, a development agency trying to avoid to pay tax, does it make sense? Uh -uh. They had, they had to change it because of political pressure in, within Norway, which is, which is good. But uh, uh, I have seen and I've studied a, a number of Scandinavian companies in Tanzania and quite often they don't pay minimum taxes, the minimum wages, I mean, to, to their workers. They pay less than that because it's possible to, to do it because people are desperate for work and you can pay less than you're supposed to by law. Um, why don't we look into this? Why don't we demand from our companies that they don't make local LTDs and hand out uh, stocks to everybody? And why don't we demand that they follow the law of the country? It, it, it surprises me. Also, I understand that Norway is uh, one of the Western countries that have voted against uh, a propose, uh, pro 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 proposal in, in the UN about um, uh, not allowing transfer of surplus from uh, an international company in one country to another branch of the same company uh, in another country again. So if there is a surplus created in Tanzania but the taxes are high, you transfer it to Guinea or something and tax it there because um, they have lower tax. You can move the money around like this. Norway should be in the front line to, to fight for these things, I think. Um, many times also we, we, uh, we uh, come to, to a country like, like Tanzania, for instance, that I know so well, uh, and, uh, and suggest to them, why don't we make some rules and regulations, that suggestions for you, and then you can implement them if you like them. That is also development aid, and we give them, for instance, uh, regulations for, for, for tourism or for um, trophy hunting and so on. And uh, of course they are to our benefit, these regulations. I don't have a clue how much time I have, but that's another thing. Uh, <laughs> there is a valley in, uh, in uh, the highlands of, of southern Tanzania, which is called Kilumbiro which had a fantastic uh, tradition for rice farming for 800 years. And the farmers were relatively wealthy with an income of about 3,000 kuna per month, which is on average for uh, about 15,000 farmers. And uh, several of them had tractors and they were doing great. Then Norfolk came into the picture 
and um, donated 60 million, 10 million dollars, 60 million kuna, to um, get a uh, uh, combined Indian Norfund company to take over much of the land and uh, remove the traditional farmers to grow rice. Within, this happened three years ago, and within the first two years, rice production was halved in that valley because of erosion, uh, because the people who, who were planning this did not have a clue about ecology or natural resource management, but were most likely economists and lawyers. <laughs> They're okay for their use, maybe. <laughs> Uh, there is a company called Green Resources in the, in the highlands of southern Tanzania. Over the last 30 years they have got about 60 million kroner in, um, in foreign aid money to develop a sawmill industry. This is not what they develop. This is a local sawmill, but they are competing with the local sawmills. Uh, this was sold about 10 years ago to a group of Norwegian investors for about 600,000 kroner. So it became more or less subsidizing a Norwegian <coughs> company. So we lack control of, over what our companies are doing in development countries. All of these transfers that I mentioned for you, there's no control with the environmental effects. Like this rice farming project I mentioned for you, <coughs> there should be an ecological uh, um, evaluation of the effect of this by law. And I asked no fund for it. They said uh, we don't have it. But by law they are supposed to have it. Then a journalist came on, on this case and she asked them also I want to see the evaluation, ecological evaluation of this. And they still didn't have it. So apparently they haven't followed uh, Tanzanian law and, and actually made a uh, an evaluation of the effects of this. If they had done that, rice production could still be uh, 60,000 tons per year and uh, the farmers would still have a good livelihood there. There's very little control of the social effects of the project, as I see it. Um, one problem is, uh, how do we see ourselves? Um, I, as an ecologist, I study <laughs> wildlife and, and, and so on, and for me, these uh, people from Norway going there is kind of wildlife too, and I like to look at what they're doing. <laughs> Sitting at the edge of the pool, drinking uh, umbrella drinks and discussing between themselves. Now I'm being nasty, I know. Um, when you talk to colleagues there, they perceive us as corrupt. Because we have a common project, and so much of the money goes to fly down there. And Nora, for instance, would fly on first class, which cost uh, five or six times the regular price. Stay in the expensive hotels, buy expensive dinners, all for project money. Which doesn't really make sense. It, it seems to be some kind of corruption, doesn't it? I mean, if, if someone comes from China, and uh, you were traveling around with this guy in all over Norway to look at forest, for instance. And he, you know that he receives uh, 50 times what you get per day. You would, be, you would feel this was odd. But this is the, the, what is happening. The Chinese have, have a lot of success because they come and say, we want to get money from this. And they live of the noodles and, and cheap rice and stay in a local place. And they do the job. And they behave like locals, in the sense that they live relatively simple. They don't demand a luxury hotel. Um, many times I think Norwegians don't ask too much. They think they know the answer. They do not mingle except between themselves. Uh, Norwegian bars, uh, you meet at the swimming pool in Oyster Bay or something. Um, I don't think we are perceived as very nice. I think we need to change the way we do this. You can't have a meeting about poverty reduction in a luxury hotel. You know? <laughs> so, uh, 
we, I don't think we are, we are, we have, anyone believes that we are honest about what we do. Also, we pretend to be experts in solving their problems when we should actually look at our own problems, what we are doing, what our businesses are doing there. And this should be a hot potato in, in Norwegian media, I think. And of course, many times we don't know the cultural rules for what, how to behave and so forth. So what can we do? As I started saying, I think African countries have their own problems and they are the ones to solve their own problems. And then we can use our leg, the other leg, to solve our side of the problems and behave decent and uh, uh, try to get more fair and good uh, laws and rules and regulations for, for dealing with Africa, for doing trade and so forth. Many times we don't want to do what was successful for us like agricultural corporations, like um, tall barriers and so on for, for our products to protect, protect us against England, which became more industrialized before we did and so on. But if it worked for us, why shouldn't it work for Africa? And we want to break down their tall barriers, we want to have huge companies coming in, kicking out the farmers instead of building up corporations there. So, many times I think also we have the wrong people to solve the, the problems. If you're building a bridge, you don't hire a cook to design the bridge. You hire an engineer. If you're going to do an a investment in livelihoods and development and natural resource management and so on, why do you have an economist or lawyer to do this? as it seems to me, it, it often is the, the case. So, um, when you discuss this with African colleagues, they will usually say, just stay out of here, not me personally. <laughs> but if we just keep out of Africa, everything will be nice. Or if we are going to do, do trade, then do it on, 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 fair, um, on a fair basis, not exploitation. So, that would solve many of the problems. I think we don't need development aid, but we need fair, uh, relatively fair trade. We can do uh, a normal trade with Sweden. Why not with Tanzania or Guinea? Why do we have to exploit them when we do trade there? As it seems for me. Um, then every time we, we try to do something nice, we are misunderstood, we think. For instance, recently the Norwegian foreign minister was in southern Tanzania to hand out some money for electricity to poor villages there. By coincidence, it's the same area with start oil now of fired oil. <laughs> and of course everybody there knows that. So they know it's kind of a bribe. But, um, okay, no problem. Uh, one, of the talk, one of the speakers uh, talked about the situation 40, 50 years ago. Uh, that it wasn't that bad at that time. Actually, it was quite good. And now it's a lot worse. I call it uh, the development. And I think we have a great deal to do with it in the way we do trade with Africa. And that uh, the foreign aid that we're giving uh, is not really benefiting very much mainly because we don't get out there and we don't know what we're doing. So, I hope I, have more, I don't have more slides, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>